Thank you for the introduction, and um, uh, thanks to Center 3 and uh, Function Keys Festival for inviting me to, uh, to come and uh, talk about something that I uh, am uh, um, enjoying doing and, uh, and uh, reaching out into the community uh, to talk about. So this is, gives me an opportunity to do that. And so I think we've got uh, something like 30 minutes or thereabouts, so uh, if I go on too long, I'm sure someone will uh, give me some sort of a notice. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, this project called Vibrofusion Lab in, uh, in London, Ontario. And I'm going to start by uh, saying um, vibration is life, life is vibration. Um, and I think that's thinking about it in a very fundamental way, that essentially everything that exists uh, is, exists as a result of vibration. Um, so uh, to me, that is a, um, a very uh, sort of simple uh, starting point uh, for exploring uh, vibration uh, beyond the fact that everything vibrates. And uh, uh, so uh, when I think about vibration, uh, I think about um, the basic law of the universe, I guess, and that would be that uh, vibration is life and life is vibration. So uh, what that means to me is, and, and uh, what sort of is the uh, inspiration, I guess, for me thinking about this whole project is um, that everything that exists vibrates. Um, our cells, cells in our bodies are vibrating all the time. Uh, atoms are vibrating. Uh, so, in a sense, uh, it, it is a very a fundamental uh, part of our being. Uh, so, I'm going to start uh, with um, which is sort of prior to the, uh, the start of uh, Microfusion Lab. Um, and we're going to, uh, that uh, goes back to about six years ago um, when I heard about this project called the Emoji Chair uh, that was being developed at Ryerson University uh, in what was then the Center for Learning Technologies. Uh, it's since been renamed as the Inclusive Media and Design Center at Ryerson University. Um, and uh, so I, I should mention, first of all, too, that, uh, that I have two children and they are both deaf. So I've been sort of very uh, uh, strongly uh, connected with the deaf community for now probably close to 25 years. Um, so this sort of uh, caught my attention, this, this uh, Modi Chair project. So um, I uh, went to a public concert that they were hosting that the uh, Inclusive Media Design Center was hosting in, um, uh, in Toronto. Uh, and that's where they uh, set up a number of the chairs and they had some bands playing and uh, invited people from both the deaf and hearing community to come in. So uh, the, the Emoji Chair Project, the, the, the sort of rationale for the research was to develop a theater chair uh, for the deaf, uh, where sound would become a vibrotactile experience. So that when we go into a theater as hearing people, <clears throat> we, we hear, uh, uh, we're, we're sort of uh, uh, surrounded uh, by sound. Uh, and that's how, something that's lacking for deaf people. So this uh, was an attempt to um, enrich their experience in a movie theater uh, through vibrotactile. Um, the other was to uh, explore audio tactile display systems for creating vibrational compositions. By that I mean uh, they were starting to work with um, the idea of, of musicians uh, and uh, compositions, uh, musical compositions being played through the chair so that again you could uh, feel the, uh, the uh, vibrational uh, elements of the sound and to investigate the potential of vibration as a form of artistic expression. Um, and that was uh, sort of the key um, part of the research that caught my attention. So 
This is uh, uh, on the left a, a pic picture of one of the early prototypes that they had developed. Um, and so not only was the uh, Inclusive Media and Design Center involved, but also Smart Lab, which is also uh, at, at Ryerson. Uh, and it's a science and music auditory research and technology lab. Um, so this, uh, I'll, with this next slide, you'll get a, a better idea of what um, the chair is made up. So the, the, um, what you saw is the previous chair. This is a very similar prototype. Um, so basically, uh, if you look up here, it's, uh, it, uh, what they refer to as the uh, alternative sensory information display uh, system, uh, which was also uh, sort of for more uh, public use called the Ammonia Chair. Technology separates audio signals into discrete micro tactile output channels. Uh, what we call voice coils uh, that can be presented on the body to create a high resolution audio tactile experience uh, through direct connection with uh, musical instruments, live sound, uh, digital audio files, uh, and various other coding systems uh, and devices. So up until more recently, um, the stimulus for the, uh, the software was, was essentially audio files, so working with sound uh, and, and uh, translating into a biotactile experience. Um, the, so what you're seeing here uh, in this picture is uh, uh, essentially taking the uh, voice codes out of the chair and, and working with different sort of concepts um, uh, for the body. Um, in the chair, you're seeing a sort of parallel strips, um, and there, each strip has eight channels uh, in in, um, in the strip. I'm just going to step over here for a minute. Um, so these eight channels and these eight channels are parallel. So these two, these two, these two, these two are connected. Um, and so, with their research, um, our our audio, like what we the frequency we can hear, is is um, uh, quite uh, extensive, um, depending again on whether we have, you know, whether we don't have hearing loss or, or not. But uh, with the tactile, um, the frequencies that we can actually identify on our skin uh, is, is a much uh, uh, um, diminished uh, range, up to about a thousand um, hertz. So uh, within that range of uh, zero to a thousand. Uh, what they did with the software was package it into uh, eight sort of parcels of frequencies. Um, so uh, there would be, I'll, I'll show you in the next slide here. So it, it's the, conceptually it's based on the cochlea uh, of the ear. So on the, uh, on the far side there you have an illustration of the cochlea. Um, and the, the areas of the cochlea that um, process the different uh, levels of frequency. Um, so high frequencies um, are, uh, so low frequencies are on the inner part of the cochlea, and as you go out, the higher frequencies um, are uh, in this area. So basically the idea was to take that and, and unwrap it, or just lay it out uh, in this sort of um, and so, uh, again, you go from, in this case, somewhere in the, in the range of zero to a uh, maximum of around 1,000. If you jump into 1,000, um, you're into a higher frequency um, that is easy to hear, but it, it, your, your skin just doesn't have the, uh, the, the um, uh, complexity of, of um, uh, uh, centers or, or um, uh, um, nerves that, that can identify the frequencies. So when I, uh, after the, the con oh, sorry. <laughs> after the concert that um, uh, I went to where they were uh, featuring the chairs, um, I uh, approached them to talk more about the project and some ideas that I had in terms of um, taking the technology and 
uh, making it more available uh, outside of the sort of academic community and, and more into the arts uh, and uh, culture community. So I started doing, um, sort of working on doing workshops out of uh, Ryerson. Um, and one of the first ones we did was uh, a workshop where we invited uh, six deaf filmmakers um, to essentially um, become orientated to the, the system, the software, and the hardware, um, and to explore it and consider it as a, uh, as a possible uh, additional feature to film. Um, so the, the, the sort of discussion was around whether a, an additional track, uh, like a tactile track, to be added to the film uh, itself. Um, that's still uh, unresolved. It takes a, a fair bit of uh, uh, research and technology to develop that. But that was sort of the, the one of the things we wanted to emphasize with that. Um, then I did a, a workshop at, uh, in London uh, at what was called the Unlap uh, London uh, at Research Park at the University. Um, and in this case, um, invited uh, a number of uh, artists from various disciplines to come and again spend two or three days um, in this sort of workshop setting uh, to develop uh, um, a, some sort of uh, short uh, uh, hypertactile composition. Uh, and, it, and what we, we provided them with was a film segment. Uh, and so they had the sound, uh, but we wanted to, uh, to sort of um, encourage them to not think so much and work so much with sound, but work with the whole idea of, of the experience the uh, tactile. And uh, so, this is part of the workshop. So, um, a PhD student at Ryerson, um, who was helped with some of the original uh, development software that created uh, what he called the Vibracord. So that's this instrument you see here, which is um, uh, based on uh, you know, a piano idea. Um, but he broke up into one, two, three, four, five, uh, different, um, again, frequency ranges. So that added to the number of, or the number of, the variable uh, possibilities of creating uh, the tactile, um, considering there, first of all, are eight channels, and then layering them again with five uh, sets of eight keys. Um, so that was used in the workshop. And also out of Ryerson, one of the grad students, uh, uh, worked on a uh, uh, motion, uh, a movement uh, detection system um, using Kinect. Uh, and so this is just a picture of some of the, uh, um, the software. And this is um, uh, Rick Karam, who's uh, interacting with the uh, movement uh, recognition system. Um, I'll just mention Maria a little bit more here because she also worked originally on the uh, development of the Emoji Chair um, and has since uh, started this company called Tactile Audio Displays uh, Inc. in Toronto. So her interest is, uh, well, a number of things. One is to uh, develop the more the, sort of the commercial possibilities of the chair uh, format. Um, and you'll see some examples of that, of some of her work. Uh, in a little bit. Uh, so this is the poster that of the um, the concert uh, that I first uh, um, went to in, in Toronto. So Inclusive Media Design Center, essentially what their the purpose of the, the department, and the, this is now spreading to, to uh, lots of other universities and that, is uh, the whole idea of inclusive design. Um, you know, considering uh, the, the population, the disability po population, the deaf population, blind population, and um, uh, addressing the, the lack of accessibility uh, for those uh, populations, uh, particularly in the area of entertainment, uh, in the area of arts, in the, in the area of communication uh, itself. So, 
out of that, um, we came up with, I, I um, had this idea that uh, this technology should be um, available to people outside of the university uh, environment. Um, and being, having a, quite a long history of, uh, of uh, as an artist myself, um, I wanted to somehow or other uh, bridge the gap between uh, you know, university and sort of public life, <laughs> so to speak, with artists, um, but also bridge the gap between the various uh, communities of disabilities, community here, community and deafblind uh, communities. So around this uh, concept, uh, the Fusion Lab um, started, and this is uh, kind of um, trying to um, detail uh, what I envision or what I see the role of the uh, Centre in London is. Uh, so interactive creative research studio that promotes and encourages the creation of a new accessible art form, the Bible Tactile. Um, provides the opportunity to create compositions and expand artistic practices that are designed to be experienced as a tactile uh, experience. Uh, Fusion Lab is committed to providing accessibility and creative opportunities for people of all abilities. It encourages the bridging of disciplines, cultures, and modalities, uh, and explore the multisensory as new forms of uh, new forms for languages of communication. Um, so, I, I, with the, um, the idea that, for instance, with music, it is a form of communication. It's, it's, uh, something that we can um, create an emotional uh, uh, response. We can, um, uh, we can have an exchange through music with, with other people and with, our, with the audience. And so to me, um, the vibra tactile, the idea of vibra tactile was to consider it as well as a language in itself. Um, so uh, vibra, uh, vibra Fusion Lab needed the space and um, living just outside of London, it was important that it be in London for me. Uh, and so this was a space that uh, I was able to uh, locate and come up with the, uh, uh, an agreement to rent it. It's about 2,000 uh, square feet. So it's uh, you know fairly substantial size. Um, I'd say it's maybe equivalent to the space here. Uh, and so then we started doing uh, sort of uh, more uh, public outreach and um, in this case, <coughs> as part of the week launch in London, Ontario in 2012, uh, I uh, curated a number of uh, uh, music performance um, uh, groups in London uh, or individuals in some cases and uh, set up in, at that time a number of the chairs so that uh, anyone that attended Greek uh, Mosh or attended Museum London would again have the opportunity to um, to experience the uh, the sensation, uh, the tactile sensation of, of uh, the, the uh, uh, compositions that they uh, presented. And this was some of the uh, reaction of uh, people there uh, at the Greek Mosh. Judging from this uh, quite a, um, enthusiastic response. Following that, uh, in uh, 2013, uh, we were invited, to, uh, Orchestra London invited us to set up uh, 12 uh, chairs at uh, Centennial Hall, a concert hall in London, for their um, Christmas concert, and with the idea that they were able to get sponsors to invite people from the deaf community to come and uh, enjoy uh, and experience the concert on a, on a level that they wouldn't normally uh, have the opportunity for. Um, so just a, a various uh, images here of setting up the chairs. Um, and what, what you can see here is that there is uh, quite a, a number of, of, of levels of development of the chairs. These are really very early. Uh, then these are uh, actually IKEA chairs. The system has been uh, 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 
placed inside them, and then back here, there's actually two sets of theater chairs. Um, so, uh, a range of uh, opportunities for the, uh, the deaf uh, uh, audience to experience. Also, a uh, ASL interpreter on stage. Um, so, it was a really uh, a wonderful opportunity, again, to, um, to provide this um, um, type of technology uh, to, uh, into the public uh, domain.
in the last uh, year or so, we've been uh, fairly busy out in the community, uh, again, informing other people about the lab, um, uh, inviting people to come. And um, so these are examples of some of the things that we've been, that I've been um, uh, doing um, on behalf of the uh, Biofusion Lab. Uh, some of these will be familiar to you, uh, some not so much. Total Technologies is, uh, again, uh, a festival or a conference in uh, Toronto that happens every year that uh, addresses or explores, again, sort of the uh, art and technology uh, and, and the sort of uh, uh, the, the in, um, development of these uh, uh, and the bridging of these two, these two disciplines is becoming very uh, prominent as, as uh, digital technology develops. Um, outside of um, the idea of the chair uh, and working with fiber tactile in other forms, in other sort of uh, installation forms, um, here's a number of, of um, activities that uh, this was in uh, Windsor, and um, what, what you see here is this system up here is called the sound beam, and it's a uh, it's an instrument that was uh, developed in uh, England about 30 years ago uh, with, with the notion of being able to track movement and create sound. Um, so these, what look like uh, microphones, are actually um, ultraviolet uh, sensor. They emit a, a beam, an invisible beam, and as you uh, 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 break the beam with your hand or your body or, or some object, uh, it'll create a sound from an audio file that's in the uh, program. Um, you can also, uh, if you, you can um, uh, program it to work with distance so that you can actually, uh, as you move towards the sensor, you can create uh, a range of frequencies uh, and um, tones. Uh, so this, uh, and these we're able to, uh, to again, um, connect right into the chairs. So this becomes much more of a sort of performative uh, activity. Um, but the other thing is that it's really important uh, with this kind of um, movement or sensor technology is that someone in a wheelchair, for instance, can have this system set up, can interact with it, and create uh, sound and music um, compositions themselves. Uh, so this was uh, this is at the lab. This system is at the lab, and. Um, uh, it's a very, it's very popular as well with um, with children uh, because they can, you know, sort of get into this sort of performance dance routine. But but while they're moving, they're actually creating the sound element of it. Uh, but I think it has, it, I know it has all kinds of applications again within the arts community. Uh, this was uh, a piece that uh, uh, my partner and I did. We have a collection called Old oh Honey. And, so there's a battery tactile system right down here, so that the, um, uh, the covering of that uh, uh, sort of horn and honey shape uh, would vibrate with, with uh, uh, sound, uh, an audio file. And uh, this is a, a, an artist in California who uh, is working with a similar type of chair, um, and this uh, uh, dancer is working with the Wii system, so the Wii. Uh, would, uh, as she moved, would um, uh, change the, uh, the vibrotactile experience in the chair. And this is something that I'm working with right now. Um, it's a, um, it's kind of, it's a full camera is what it is, or a full projector, meaning none of this works here. It just looks like it should. On the top here is a um, uh, music box. Uh, you can actually get music options now that aren't programmed. And you can uh, essentially write uh, musical scores that run through the uh, music boxes, much like a player piano. Um, and then uh, there's just a bicycle light here and a magnifying glass so that you can actually you play it. Uh, it can be mic'd and, and uh, directed in the chair or any uh, uh, similar system. Uh, and also, we get this sort of projection on the wall. Uh, 
Uh, so we did a performance. Uh, this was part of the performance we did in London uh, recently. Um, so the other thing that's interesting that's happened at the lab is um, I've been uh, almost immediately uh, young like bands from London and area were coming and uh, looking for a place to perform. Um, so it's also become this sort of alternative music scene. Um, and uh, this was uh, this is sort of the front of the lab, <laughs> and it's just kind of packed with. Uh, there would be some nights three or four bands playing in there. So while they're um, while they're playing, we hook them up in the chair as well. So you can be sitting in the chair and watching the band live, uh, or a band member can be sitting in the, in the chair playing. Uh, and so there's this whole sort of uh, uh, sensory cycle that we like to get going in there. And uh, this is uh, as recent as last night. We had a, a fundraising function there, and uh, uh, Steam Whistle provided us with uh, the, uh, the, the open call. And I don't know if this has a slight diversion from. <laughs> So 
that's kind of where we're going right now. And here's a couple more ideas. This is a vest that um, has 40 different um, uh, centers of vibration. In it. Um, so it's quite an uh, overwhelming kind of body experience. Uh, and again, that you can just uh, uh, carry an iPod and plug it in. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it's uh, very useful for just, you know, uh, having some freedom to move around. And this is another um, system we're working on, which is a, uh, what we call a board, um, that has the, uh, uh, that actually can have a stereo system inside of it, so that it's easy um, to feel it in your hands. The idea, of course, with that is that your hands are uh, highly sensitive, one of the most highly sensitive parts of your body. So we're trying to investigate those sensitive areas of your body and how we can best produce these objects. Um, and any of these, as I say, can be used within you know, the arts community. Artists can explore them and, and develop them, but also um, if you wanted an audience, you want to interact with your audience. And one of the um, goals of, of Fiber Fusion Lab is to reach out and to develop new audiences. So um, we were, we're working right now with, um, uh, I'm working with a deaf, uh, dance choreographer from London, England. Um, that she incorporate uh, that uh, sensory element into her choreography. Um, Tangle Arts in Toronto is an um, arts disability uh, organization that uh, uh, coordinates the uh, disability arts. Um, Deaf Film Festival, uh, there's a uh, blind uh, theater group in London, Ontario that I'm working with. So the interest and the, the potential of the use of the technology is, is um, kind of unlimited right now, and uh, it's still, as you can see, um, quite early in development stages. Um, but that's the point, I guess, I'll end by saying that the point of Fiber Fusion Lab is to um, have, provide a space, provide the resources, um, and the opportunities, uh, and the invitation for people to come and uh, work there. So um, I'm just going to stop at that point, and um, I guess now, Oh, I should also, I just want to quickly, yeah, these are some things that are coming up. Uh, and on there, well, there's, I should mention too, we are um, collaborating with Center 3 right now on uh, a project that Andrew's very involved in um, that we're hoping will explore um, EEG, uh, uh, use of EEG headsets. To uh, create uh, lifetime uh, experiences. So it has a lot of um, uh, um, adaptability. Um, so we're very excited about that. And I will end by acknowledging the support of Park Camp Council for the Arts, uh, Grand, the Arts Council, Social Sciences and Events Research Council, uh, of all of my great attitude. <laughs> that allows us to operate the lab and uh, um, be able to do this work.